So we got the uh, official click. It took us a few minutes to get going this morning, but we are now recording. And I've got a great guest with me today, a um, gentleman that I work with in my financial firm. Uh, it's actually a, a client of mine. Is it okay to tell people? Yeah, it's a client. Of mine client. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to let people know that or no, not. But, but that, to me, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Because um, it shows, and I share that with people when I'm, I'm talking with them and I'm um, looking to refer them to you. I say he manages my m finances and you're, you're about to say the M, the M word. <laughs> Don't be telling people your business on the show, Rob. So this is my good friend, Rob Turner, uh, accountant, credit repair specialist extraordinaire. We'll talk more about that today. But uh, Rob, thanks for coming on the show and uh, sharing with us today things that's going to be really important, I think, for consumers to pay attention to. So I'm really happy to have you here. And uh, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. And this is a, a very timely uh, connection that we're making here. Yeah. Because of the, the, the time and the situation we're in, the, from the tax standpoint, people are already calling, what about my stimulus? Uh, right. You know, what do I do? I didn't get mine. Uh, uh, I don't can't find my tax papers. Um, and then the other side, from the credit repair side, um, you know, things have been tough. Yeah. So people have not been able to pay bills on time and to do things that um, end up on their credit report. So we've been able to help from both sides. So yeah. it's very timely. You know, COVID, I think when we finally come out of this pandemic and we're able to go back and looking in a rear view mirror, it's, it's, it's always evident of the things that we should have done, right? Or yes. the, the choices we should have made. So um, that rear view mirror can show us a lot. And I think when we go back and look at um, 2020 and we go assess our own personal, you know, financial situations, we're going to see some of those things that were blind spots um, while we were in the moment. Right. But when we go back and assess, I, I think as a nation, as a society, we're going to go go back and look at some lessons learned. And one of those, I think, is going to be, as a society, we're going to see just how fragile we were. Yes. I mean, f as bad as COVID has been, and as much as I hate to say that we've lost you know, lives because of it, and there's been right. a lot of people that have been sick, what it really exposed in our country was financially how fragile our nation is. Yes. And, you know, the statistics we always hear about people that are really one paycheck from bankruptcy. Right. Um, you know, had it not been for some things that were, whether, whether you like him or hate him, but, you know, what President Trump and the cabinet and Congress put in play to stop creditors from uh, taking people's homes yes. and repoing their cars you know, because we found out real quick that if a person doesn't have a paycheck and they get shut down for a week or two weeks, that becomes devastating. And, and I'm sure in your practice, you've probably seen that, right? Yes, we have seen quite a bit of that. So it, it, as you mentioned, it was been real helpful that they put the brakes um, on a person just losing their home because if they lose it, one, the, the person who did the financing, they... Yeah. They're out of money. The lender loses. They they yeah. lose money. And where does that um, person go? All right. And so you, if you didn't uh, create some change, you'd end up with a lot more people on the yeah. street with nowhere to go. Yeah. So the, these are things we're going to talk about with Rob Turner today. And before we get too deep in the show, and I always do this, that the one thing that is constant in our show, Rob, is... Um, we always love to give a shout out to our nation's military. Absolutely. And, and today being a special day, today is the inauguration of our 40, 46th president. Oh, that's uh, right. President uh, Joe Biden. We don't have to call him president-elect yeah, Joe absolutely. Biden anymore. It's, and, uh, 
I, I know some of like my friend Bill out there uh, who might be listening. But, but Bill loves. He, he is like a Democrat's Democrat, and he knows I, I lean a little more Republican. So don't don't you guys be hating because I'm talking politics this morning. <laughs> we're gonna, we're going to get to that, but um, you, you know he's really happy. It's not the guy I voted for, but this is where I think we were talking pre pre show. Right. This is where as America, we're, you and I are American. Yes, we're right? all, and we're all in this together. That's right. So we we got to take a time to go give the dude a chance. Yes. I don't have to like him to give him a chance. And we, we got to agree to disagree. Yeah, that's right. And we're not all going to think the same way. You, yeah. Um, everybody is a part of different groups. Yeah. By birth. Yeah. By choice. But all of those groups make up the whole pie. Yeah. I think if we go back, um, and, and I'm going to get to this toast, and this is part of the toast, but if we go back to a very sad time in our country just 20 years ago, and we go back to 9-11, okay. um, you know, something bad happened that day, and our, our country was teetering. Not many people back then like President Bush. Right. Right? And there was a voting scandal then between he and Gore. Yes. But unfortunately, something really bad happened. We, we had an attack from outsiders on our homeland. And, you know, two buildings fell down in New York City that were icons for our nation of, of you know, strength, power, success. Um, and, and then the Pentagon attack. And then a crash in a Pennsylvania farm field. But... What happened on that day from something bad, Americans really for a very short period of time, unfortunately, rallied together. Yes. Rallied around um, our ser servants and our civil servants and our military servants, those who were willing to serve. And that's the one thing I want to toast and talk about today is we still have 100 percent a volunteer force. Yes. Now, there, there might be two or three dudes that kind of got in some trouble <laughs> when the judge is like, do you want to go try the Marine Corps? Yeah. Or you want to go try uh, uh, the penitentiary? Well, one of the things that, that I'm hearing you say is, and I um, stand by it, oftentimes it takes a crisis for people to come together. Yeah. And so we're in a crisis mode now. Right. And I the positive thing that will come out of this is that yeah. it will pull people together. Yeah. And, and that's, um, you know, respecting each other. And so one of the things I want to respect this morning is you, you shared with me earlier, you, you, you haven't had a drink in a long time. In a long time. I didn't know that. <laughs> so I thought you were a party animal. Right? Little did I well, know. I am a party bad. animal. I but just you don't, don't need, you don't need a little Johnny Walker <laughs> to help with that. So, um, we're, we're going to do a toast. Rob's going to do an air toast with me here, but I will be drinking. You will see okay. that Rob's glass is going to stay at that level. Okay. And I promise Donna it's at that level. <laughs> um, but you know, thank you to our military. Thank you to our nation of, uh, leaders and servants who have, um, volunteered to, to put it on the line That's right. when they're called upon. We appreciate you. Cheers. And you actually will talk about that in your first part of your career yes on the civil service side so what's what's up oh ian ian's gonna <laughs> cheers he's gonna help you out rob thank see you. that thank you ian yeah. he's taking so, one look, for the team here we're, we're coming together hey, we got to. that's awesome so rob uh take me back to young man rob kind of let our audience know a little bit about you where'd you grow up what okay. did you do before you became a tax wizard and <laughs> credit repair wizard? Glad to tell you. I am a, I am the youngest of 11. Oh, wow. And uh, when I was born, m many of my siblings were already grown. I actually have nephews and nieces who are older than I am. I thought I had a bunch of kids at five. Right. You, wow. The youngest of where do you, Where do you fit? And 11? I'm the youngest the of youngest 11. The youngest of 11. You just I'm, said that. Yes, yeah, so I'm the youngest of 11. I grew up in Washington, D.C. And so, um, I, you know, just you know new the, things the, I'm learning today. The Let stuff me that, back uh, and hear that. The, the things that I'm seeing on TV, I can relate to. I've been, you know, down to the White House because it's just downtown. So, yeah. you know, anytime you were downtown, you were right there. Do you mind saying what year you were born? 
Oh, no, I was born in 1953. Okay, so you were born during a time of, of real civil rights and real yes. Yes. movement. Wow. Yes. And being in D.C., I'm sure you saw your fair share of uh, people protesting on both sides, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, that was a daily thing because there's That's always, go, every right? day, all 365 days of the year, there's somebody protesting at the White House. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, sometimes we were... You know, at a young age, we were on our bicycles and just taking a ride. We, there's always somebody protesting. Wow. So, wow. Um, but, yeah, as the youngest of 11, I was uh, the first in the family to um, complete college. Man. Um, and so, so it was cool. real different back then. There are a lot of uh, choices people have now, what majors and what things yeah. to uh, major in in college. You know, back then... If you uh, were pretty sharp in, in math, you were either a math teacher um, or, you know, there weren't, like, lots of options as they have now. And I looked at it and thinking, I know I don't want to be a math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, <laughs> you know, you're in accounting. So yeah, so I was like, <laughs> okay, the accounting sounds like a good thing for yeah. me. So that's what led me to become an accountant. Wow. So... What, what was it like, 11 kids being the youngest? So, you know, um, are, are all your siblings still living? Actually, I am now the patriarch. No kidding. I am the patriarch. All, I mean, at the, when I was born, many of my siblings were already grown. Holy cow. So, um, so uh, you, you probably like me. So my mom and dad were each one of nine. Okay. And... Grew up in uh, from Hillsboro, North Carolina, to Dunn, North Carolina, not too far from where you have some real estate property right, there in South in Carolina. South Carolina. Um, but I have cousins that I have first cousins that I have never laid eyes on, hmm. and you, you know that's something that even with family reunions and stuff like that, a, a lot of people don't make it back to those some years. Right. You know, whether it be financial issues or work issues um, or just, you know, COVID not letting us do it anymore. Right. That's right. But were there any siblings that you had that you never met? No. So you got you got, I got to, to I got to see and spend time with all my siblings. That's beautiful. Um, you know, at that age, um, like on the weekends. Yeah. I. Uh, uh, you know, you don't realize what you're going through at the time, but I yeah. would t uh, catch the bus um, and um, go spend the weekend with a different sibling. Wow. So I got to... Now, where did they all go and, and kind of what, what Most were... of them stayed in, in, in the D.C. Around area, DC, okay. you know, which was, uh, as they say, DMV now. Um, <laughs> and the first time I heard that, I was like, they're not all at the DMV, That's... so... Now I understand is the you know District Maryland and Virginia, but right. most of them stayed local, even though there were a couple um, who married into military, and um, you know so they travel with their spouse. I got you. Um, so was that the profession of choice for your siblings? Uh, was mainly military? Um, no, the I didn't have. Uh, um, let me see. Actually, my dad was military, okay. and. Um, Thank you for your service, sir. Yes, my dad uh, was Army, um, but none of my, uh, so there was three brothers mm -hmm. and seven sisters. And so. Man, that's a bunch of girls. That's a bunch of girls. So, um, but none of them actually joined the military at all. Okay. Um, okay. So, and they've, like I say, for the most part, stayed around yeah. uh, DMV. And, and so you were the first. To, to be able to go to school, finish school. So were most of your siblings blue-collar workers? Uh, Absolutely. And, man, that's awesome. Um, where'd you go to school? I went to school, uh, went to University of Maryland um, for a year. Um, well, back, I went to high school, I went all through high school yeah. in D.C. So uh, upon graduation, I went to the University of Maryland. And I'm actually in the same uh uh, freshman class with John Lucas. No kidding. Yes. And so I transferred after a year. Um, 
Did you I, know him? Did you get to just him, got or? to see him and you know just kind of chit chat. Well, he was a pretty past. vocal guy yes, even in, yes. in college, right? So. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, I grew up in small classrooms. Yeah. And so I went to University of Maryland, and you know all of a sudden life is so different <laughs> because they really. I mean, they want you to attend class, but as long as you read information. So I'm going from a class from 25 to 30 students to a class of three to 400 students. And so it didn't fit what I was accustomed to. So I transferred to Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia. There's been a couple of ball players out of Charles Oakley. Yes, yes. One of my favorite rebounders in the NBA. Yes. So... um, you know, it, you have to, as it, the, the saying goes, get in where you fit in. Yeah. I didn't fit into that environment, couldn't and be, I was so glad that couldn't I... Couldn't be a terrapin. You couldn't have your head in the shell and stick it up. There, there was a pretty decent terrapin around your time, though, probably. that I don't know. Well, uh, I'm sure you remember Lenny Bias. Lenny Bias, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a kind of a basketball guy. Yes, so yes, yeah. One of, I, would the NBA have been different had that guy lived... Yeah, because you know, he would have, he was stepping in at a time that he would have fit right in with oh, the Boston, okay. yeah, um, you know, empire and their the, the, the way they played ball. There's there's a prime example, Rob, of you know God gives us choices in life. Yes, and unfortunately, you know he's celebrating as he should have, having a great time signing that new contract yes. and sign a new deal. I think with Reebok. He had a shoe deal, Lenny Bias did, um, that he had just signed. And s- supposedly, and, and again, I don't know, and I don't want to cast you know, a, an opinion or doubt, but what I remember is that um, he tried cocaine Yes, one and they time. say that was the first time he tried it, and it just... It killed him. Yes, it... And we lost a great, yeah. great basketball player and a great human being. He was really a, a, a super guy. Um you know, I loved watching him play at the University of Maryland. It was it yeah, was his work special. ethic and um, tenacity on the court was just yeah. Um, he stood out. There's another um, while we we're on the basketball scene. Uh, growing up, do you remember uh, there was a Catholic high school in D.C.? Uh, D- is it Demathis? Yeah, you're getting ready to talk about Adrian Dantley. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was some play. See, awesome. Th- this white man can't drunk, but I, I had a pretty nasty jumper from uh, 18 feet and out. So, and there's always a guy behind the scene over here, Noah, yeah. who thinks he can take me on the basketball uh-oh, floor uh-oh. at 51. I got news for him. <laughs> he don't want any of this. Well, the, the, the thing about Dantley, he's, he, he wasn't a tall guy, yeah, but he played mostly he played big. and yeah. is a big guy. That's what people don't realize like about Charles Barkley. Yeah, he's not at all. I, I've met Charles on three different occasions. I got the opportunity to work with some guys in the NBA on on the D League side. Okay, uh, which is now the G, is D League is now G League, right? Or yeah, it's the development league. Yes. Um, and meeting Barkley, I was so surprised at how short he was. Yeah. I mean, you know, they they say six six. I'm guessing six three. Right, he's the really six not, four maybe. Because yeah. even on TV, when you're seeing him standing beside other people, yeah, yeah, he was shorter than Jordan yeah. by a few inches. Right, but the dude, I mean, he was one of the top rebounders yes. in the league, and and just ferocious in the paint. And that's uh, Adrian was kind of the same way for me. Yes, he, absolutely, he played that way. So we're getting way off on sports today, <laughs> but man. Uh, growing up in D.C., that's legit. Well, it's it just one of those. It, it, that just shows as we started off talking. We have differences. Everybody's got differences, but you have common interests yeah. as well. Yeah. And so uh, you're going to have those differences, but just build yeah, can on Can we the, find what, what brings us together and brings uh, the opportunity for us to really get to know the person we're setting across? And these are things I didn't, I didn't know. We have... You know, when we do financial meetings, we yeah, don't we go that, talk about it. that deep. Yeah. Um, but the commonality and and what we have, we, we both came from big families. Yes. Um, and and what's 
interesting about your situation is I see that a lot with big families where usually the baby and all my siblings, you know, say I'm spoiled because I was I was a baby too, Rob. Okay, okay. Um, and that, you know, I didn't get as many spankings That's and right. I didn't get as many uh, restrictions. Um, and nanana boo boo, stick your head and doo doo, Paul, Bob, and sis. That's my siblings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, anyways, um, I'm just teasing you guys. I love you. Um, you know, when you think back through those times, do you think those experiences that you had in any way? had influence on where you are today? Uh, I think so strongly because one of the key things that I remember out of that, one, just as you mentioned, the youngest of 11, I was born. Mm -hmm. um, but it, there was also the fear God put in me from mm -hmm. not just my parents, but yeah. from my siblings. And with mostly six sisters too, right? So they're sisters. probably just bossing you around. Yes. Like. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, the one of the, the uh, things I value a lot now is patience. Yeah. You know, um, I'll give you a, a short story. Uh, so my mom never drove in her life, never. You know, it was either my dad taking her someplace or one of her kids taking. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, they look forward to when I turned 16 and I could get a license. They said, here, the keys, you got mom today. Oh, that's funny. So it worked for me because it gave me a car for the day and for that night. I yeah. you know, had my girlfriend. Yeah. And so, but the patients came in. They, I'd have keys to somebody's car. They go with another, you know, sibling, cousin, whatever, and so my mom wanted to go to the Safeway, to the Giant, to the AMP, to there was a couple of other grocery stores because P Piggly Wiggly. No, we no, didn't have Piggly, Piggly Wiggly there. That's from down south. Yeah, okay. But one store would have chickens on sale. Another store would have bread on right. sale. Another would have eggs on sale. So and with eleven kids, you got to be frugal right. to find those sales. So mom said we're going to all of the stores. Yeah. So you just did your mom use? Um, remember the old discounts? Like you know, now getting a discount or or having uh, coupons was easy. But back then, remember the had green, the green stamps? stamp? Oh yeah. Yes, absolutely. You fill up the page. You fill up the page, and you get some what they considered was free stuff. Free stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. there was even times where they would say, "Here's keys, and here's twenty dollars, so y'all don't have to go to all five stores." And moms <laughs> would say, "Thank you," and she'd say. You know we're going to all five. Oh, so. <laughs> and you're like, yes, I get to yeah. drive. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I spend time being patient because there's no need to rush her. Um, yeah. You just, but, you know, I had a, a, a end game. Yeah. I've got a car. I'm going out on a date tonight. I got a car to drive. So it taught me patience. Yeah. And yeah. so people constantly ask me now, why are you so patient? Well, I, I had to be, and yeah. I had a. Uh, a reason to be patient. Yeah. Because there's a benefit in being patient. Right. And I see that That's now. A good lesson. I see that now with my clients. So I take that that patience. You know, clients will come to me and they say, Rob, this is like therapy coming to you because you take the time to listen and to, you know, uh, you just take the patience. Nobody else wants to listen and have patience with me. I said that in a couple of podcasts ago that if, you know, if you could speak to the world um, and you had, you know, 15 minutes to speak to the entire world, what would you what would you say? And you just hit the nail on the head. Um, and and I, I, I can't give the guy credit because I can't remember who said this, but I 100 percent agree with it. He said I would take 13 minutes to listen. Yes. So out of that 15 minutes, kind of like the old. Uh, you know, George Washington, hey, I'm going to spend some time sharpening my axe. You know, so if somebody gives me an hour to chop the tree down, I'm going to spend, you know, 40 minutes sharpening my axe. Yes. Where the guy goes, oh, i got to chop the tree down. Let's get to it. Let's get started, yes. You know, well, let's be smart about how we, we do that. And I think one of the smartest things that we can do, especially in the environment that we're in today, is just listen. 
is listening. And let there be some awkward silence. Yes. You know, it doesn't always have to be. And that's funny when you're on a podcast, awkward silence is not <laughs> that good. Um, <clears throat> but when you're communicating with people about issues and, and their issues and their heartaches and their troubles, you, you know, the old saying of, you know, don't judge a man until you've walked a day in his shoes. Right. I think there's some real value in that. Yes. And if you can put yourself in a place of where that person's at in that moment before you're ready to just, you know, spew on them your views, your opinions, your right. thoughts, take a little bit of time. And I, I actually can commend you and say that I can see that in you, that, you know, every interview that we've ever had, um, conversations we've had, you you soak up information. Yes. And you so I'll give you a high five on that. We'll give you the audience. I agree. You're a good listener, Rob. Uh, you, in the, the world of finance, um, you have to be a good listener because, you know, one of the things that I saw was, and you, you listen and you, you know, um, you uh, hear things and you listen to um, different trainings. Uh, oftentimes they want to prove how smart they are. Yeah. But the client really didn't come to you to find out how smart you were. Mm -hmm. They came to you so that you could help them. Right. Use your smarts, but listen to their situation yeah. and then apply your smartness. But um, the key thing is you have to be patient and listen. Yeah. That's the whole story is find out their, their environment, their issues, their circumstance, and then being able to if you can, empathize with that. Yes. Find a way to have empathy with people. Right. Um, and especially in what you're doing now with, with tax and with credit repair, being that young man, one of 11, I think that's a great fit for you because <laughs> you, you, know, you had to wait. In yes. line. I'm sure you had to wait in line for food every once in a while. Being the little guy... Well, uh, not so much. Oh, they took care of They spoiled you? They spoiled me, but <laughs> see, many of them had already moved on and had families, so they were off on their own. Oh, man. So when I came along and, you know, was old enough to realize what's going, you know, what was happening, th many of them were already out raising families. So it wasn't, yeah. I wasn't in a household where all 11 of us were there Wow. Or living in one household. So we're going to get the tax and credit parent in a sec, but I, I love just getting to know people better and at a more uh, intimate and deep level of understanding who you are. And I think it's important for people to know you and know your backgrounds. So, but when you were born, how old was your oldest sibling? Uh, my oldest sibling, when I was born, uh, was... They were 32. Holy, holy cow. 32. Wow. That's, and I think I heard you say your mom was 40-something when she had you? Yeah, she was. That That's was, insane. Even today, in today's <coughs> world, for a woman to have a child in her, she was 40 right, what? Right. She was, uh, so mom would have been 32, and I think it was 17 years, so she was 47. So holy she had cow. me at a old... You know, during that whatever period it's called, the medical term. But, yeah. Um, Man. Cheers to her. Yeah. 11 kids at that. 11 Cheers. kids. And had them all natural, no cesarean. No cesarean, all, all natural. back then it was just like, hey. Yeah, this, the, uh, uh, hey, you got pregnant. another brother or sister. Yeah. yeah. Man, what a great woman. Yeah. Now, you're. You, you lost your mom and dad at what age? How how long did they They actually live? lived to, um, my mom is five years older than my dad. They both died when they were 95. That's some good genes, right? Yeah, yeah. So I tell people all the time, I'm going to be here maybe to 105, 110. So. I like that. Yeah. So. You know, with the insurance company only lets you go to 121 now. Okay. Which is well, cool because they used I'll, to go to 100. I'll go to 121. 120, I'll take, take that. that. <laughs> yeah. My mom used to say that all the time. <clears throat> you know, doctors, you know, she, she passed with cancer, unfortunately, but she was given a pretty crappy prognosis, and the doctor said, hey, Agnes, there's a six-month window, but I've got a patient who's lived 17 years right. with your same 
uh, renal cancer. She said, oh, I'll take the 17-year plan. Yeah, I, I, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. but, and so be, being an eternal optimist and, you know, professing that over your life, I think, is important. That, yes. You know, and you pay homage back to the, the the good life and the good. That's good, clean living. When you make it to 95. Oh, yeah. You did a lot of things right. Yeah. Um, so that that's awesome. What a testament to you and your family. So cool. Um, so... You were able to have this opportunity to go to college. Uh, you, you started working um, probably at a very young age, I'm sure. Um, but after college, what happened and what led, kind of helped me get to the point of what led you to accounting and credit? Okay. Um, so while in college, you know, people are familiar with different work programs. Um, I uh, got involved in a co-op program. Okay. Well... My coming from Washington D.C. and at the time going to school in Richmond, my co-op program led me to work for Internal Revenue Service. Oh, oh boy! Okay, Jeez. so and I had the option of they said you can work in Washington D.C., mm -hmm. work in Richmond, or work in Norfolk, Virginia. So I'm thinking I've been in Washington all my life, yeah, and by now I've been in Richmond two and a half, almost three years, I'm going to venture out and try Norfolk. So I went to a new place and learned, you know, new place to stay and new uh, meet new people and yeah. a whole new experience. So that's what led me. So your civil service experience started with the IRS? Started with IRS. I was a, a, a field auditor. Oh, wow. And so... I think it's my... You guys my, watch out, Rob. It's like top <laughs> secret here. He's well, look, I'll tell you a funny story about that. So, you know, I was real proud of my job. So, you know, you, you're, you're going out, you know, having dinner or just, you know, socializing. And I am got my chest poked out and, you know, groups standing <laughs> around talking. And, you know, they're saying, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, so-and-so and I work here. And I, I, my name's Rob. I'm Rob Turner. I work at Internal Revenue. And you turn around and look back and... The five people were standing there, they're like, they all gone. <laughs> <laughs> so at first, it's like, you know, is my breath, is, yeah. you know, is, 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 is something okay, everything okay? But then I realized, so I had to realize, you got to say you work at the Treasury Department. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps people from running away. So what I figured that out. So, but the, the thing that, um, you know, to me, as a, a, a field agent, um, your job is as, as an auditor, but I couldn't have the compassion that I mm. had in me for people. Yeah. Because my job was getting kind of, money. The commissioner committed that we bring such amount of money to yeah. the table. So my job was to get the money. And you got to put the hammer to people sometimes yes, when absolutely. they've goofed up. Right? You had to close businesses. You had to put people out of work. You had to you know, put a padlock on their business and just my compassion is like, this is just hard for me. Yeah. Cause so I decided this is not for me. You mm. know, everything is not for everybody. It, yeah. It's a glorious job, but I decided to get on the other side of the table where I could freely help people to avoid that situation. Wow. That's and so right. that patience and compassion yeah. and to, uh, wanting to help people, you know, that led me and, and drove me to, you know, you, you're doing the job you're being paid to do and you go home and your your heart feels heavy and mm -hmm. you, you know, man, that's, that these two, this couple, this, you know, they ran that store and that provided the store and the provided for the family. And yeah. I had to put a padlock on the door because they couldn't pay the taxes. Right. And so... Um, Moving to the other side of the table, as I said, um, yeah. now I can help them manage their finances to mm -hmm. stay out of that situation. Yeah. So I get a lot more satisfaction now yeah. in helping people to avoid those kind of situations. That's beautiful. And it's a, a service well needed because, uh, as I'm sure you're well aware, the, the Internal Revenue Code is not the easiest thing to decipher. Oh, absolutely. And s a normal citizen is expected, if they're going to complete their own tax return, to... It's like they're expert at, at that code. 
And it's and, about three it, inches thick. Yeah. And then you go into being a, a business owner. You add a whole no, another level of complexity and confusion. Yes. And, you know, for I think a lot of business people, they see they've got to pay everybody else. They got to pay their employer. They got to pay their vendors. They got to pay suppliers. Um, they got to pay the accountant and the financial right. professionals um, to help them navigate. Well, well, how do I take a buck out of this and provide for my family? Right. And I think so often people with well-intended intentions end up in unintended situations. Right. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show today, because I know you have that big heart and you, you want to help people who may be the, the, the average financial person who might be a professional in the industry might say, well, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, waste my time w with that. Um, and one of the things you really educated me with is that like with credit issues, no matter where you're at on the spectrum of ha having a 300 credit score uh, well, to having an 850, yeah. um, everybody has a responsibility to try to keep their score as high as possible. Yes. And, and you've got a way that you've been able to help kind of crack the code. Right. So I started out in the um, accounting and tax prep business. Yeah. And so over a period of time, it led me to understand that, okay, I'm, I'm preparing these, these documents, but these people are coming to me, and I'm, as I'm listening to them, they're having real financial crisis. Yeah. So um, in doing a, the tax return, it's after the fact. Yeah. You know, so they've already messed up. Right. And they now coming to see me, and I, well, we, we can't fix this because you've already messed up, even though yeah. I, one of the things I share with clients is I'm here all year long. Call me before you make the decision mm -hmm. and let me help you make a good decision. And That's so, good. Um, but, you know, people for uh, uh, a variety of different reasons, they're uh, ashamed, they, they, they yeah. don't call. You know, I found that to be true, too, and that by the end of February... Um, you and I were talking uh, a couple weeks ago, is that, that that's a passion for me too. And I have a you know, pretty diverse clientele, but one of the things I've noticed across the board is that um, consumers need financial literacy. Yes. And they need financial education. So before they make the decision for a purchase or you know, a, a credit card or a tax strategy, Let's have some education. Like, let's make sure the baseline is solid. Yes. Let's make sure the foundation is solid before you get into um, some things that may be hard to unwind or undo. Yes. Um, and a part of that is learning how to establish a good credit profile. Yes. Um, and, you know, obviously being compliance in your, your tax and your tax strategies, um, that's super important, and those kind of work hand in hand because if your if your tax return isn't right, that's probably at some point in time going to have an effect on your credit report, right? Because the, if the if the Internal Revenue Service or the the Treasury right <laughs> co comes after you, they're they're maybe getting liens and levies and, yeah. and taking action to protect their interests in what you may or may not owe and, the Internal and, Revenue Service. And one of the things I find. Um, which led me to getting into the credit repair is being able to educate folks because it it tends to happen almost even before they start working. Mm. They start, they get, the, like as students, mm. they start to get these uh, credit cards in the mail. Oh, you just pay a minimum payment. Payment's just $10. Yeah. And before you know it, hey, let's go down to the Burger King, let's go to McDonald's, and now... The payment is thirty dollars. Right. Well, as a student, mom and dad is paying that, or you even if you have yeah. got a little job, uh, it's, I ain't worried about well, that. Well, worst case, they borrowed a lot of money, and instead of going to the school, it it's going in their it's going in their, their pocket. Fun time. And so, yeah. The other thing a lot of people don't understand is the thirty day um, process of paying bills. Mm -hmm. Most people look at it and say, well, as long as I pay it this month, I'm, I'm good. Mm. Well, it's not set up on sometime this month. 
Right. You know, if your payment is the fifth, you pay interest for 30 days. Right. Not, well, it's due the fifth, but as long as I pay it by the 25th, well, you've paid an extra 20 days of interest. And many people don't understand, why did my credit card balance keep going higher? Yeah. Well, it's based on you paying 30 days of interest, but you yeah. let it go 50 days. Right. And so it got higher because that extra mm. got added to your account because right. your payment wasn't high enough to, you know, so uh, um, spending time educating folks yeah. as well as, uh, you know, trying to help their immediate situation, but trying to teach them so that they change their habits. Yeah. And so when you're looking at, at credit, and we'll bring it back to tax for a few minutes because we are changing, um, legislation is going to change because, you know, everybody um, in the political world, when, the, when those transitions happen, the, the new, like President Biden, he wants to come in with his new yes. tax strategy. Right. Um, you know, Congress and senators uh, or representatives and senators want to bring their new uh, incentives to the floor and have it voted on, which, Correct. you know, will, will change uh, revenue sources for the federal government. Um, you know, and President Biden has made some pretty significant changes that he's proposing in his new tax plan. Um, and, and the bigger part of this, Rob, uh, from my mind's eye, is that when we look out into the future, you know, we've got a national deficit that right now is spiraling mm. yes. out of control. And by the end of this year, it's projected to be at over $29 trillion if it's not already there right. now. Um, so knowing that that debt's there, knowing that the government's not collecting enough revenue okay. uh, above and beyond what they're spending, so we're spending more than we're making right. as a nation. In your personal opinion, with all that going on, what do you think has to happen with taxes in the future? Oh, that's a that's a real tough. Yeah, uh, uh, because because like currently because of COVID, yeah. you know, so many people are out of work, and so if you don't help these folks, you still got to take care of them. Right. So I think that's why the uh, uh, the stimulus is necessary. I think yes, everyone would absolutely. agree on that. I mean, and you know, you look, you can look at that and say it's really not enough. But there's, I mean, there's only so much that can be done. You just can't open the, the vaults up and yeah. say, "Go get what you need." Right. Um, but you, you know, everybody be driving Bentley. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you. We're all in it together, yeah. and you got to help everybody some. Yeah. Um, while things stabilize. Yeah. So as once it stabilizes, people will get back to work, people will be building, and, you know, the... So in your personal opinion, when you look out into the future in your crystal ball, do you think income taxes have to go up, go down, or do you think they stay the same? Well, they're going to go up. Mm. Um, mm. I mean, you got to pay for this. Yeah. You, you know, when you go in the store and buy some things... You can't kick the can <clears throat> down the road. You... you yeah. Before you leave out, somebody's got to pay. Right. Now, you know, there are times that, like now, I'm in the store and uh, you see a person and they're struggling and, you know, based on what they put on the the conveyor belt, they're, you know, some amount of money short. Mm. And, you know, when I'm able to, I'll say, just okay. add that to my yeah. bill, you know, because yeah. they're getting, they're not getting state. Yeah. They're getting cans of tuna fish or, you yeah. know, just some, yeah. some bare necessities. So, you know, that's uh, when I look back, part of uh, the, th the the lessons I got as a kid that you got to share. Mm. You know, so even though I was spoiled, it's still you got to share. Yeah. So, you know, I find myself at times, uh, you know, being in a grocery store and just um, – or, or I've actually even handed some people, you know, money in the mm. store. It's like right. – yeah. Oh, I'm going to big heart, Rob. Yeah, I'm going to spend this somehow. They need it. Then, yeah. So, yeah, you've been, you're always thinking. And you're all, I, I see that about you every time you come in my office. Um, you, you're always given some new, <laughs> new gadget or some new uh, 
uh, thing that actually helps imp- just improve life a little bit on the right. so like uh, a mask Rob brought in today, you know I, I call it a jo- jock strap thing. <laughs> but I'm just you know, do, you, do you have it over there? No. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Let's show everybody what Rob brought us today to help us breathe a little easier behind these masks. Um, is this device and it's pretty ingenious. It's just right. a little plastic cup. Yeah, just yeah. Here we go. It, it, it's like the remember Batman and Bane, <laughs> um, but this thing fits over your face and keeps your. Actually, I think I have it upside down. Yeah, keeps your Keep, your mask off your face. That allows you to breathe easier, and you know, yeah. for those who wear lipstick, um, yeah, like Noah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, keeps that lipstick off of your mask. So it's a real simple thing. Somebody I'm sure is making a lot of money off of this, but. Yeah, whoever um, you are, this is pretty cool, pretty neat invention. What's this called? Do you know even what it's called? Uh, I think it's a nose, uh, breathe, uh, nose guard, sneeze yeah. guard. We'll, we'll have the fact effect. checkers back there find yeah. it. But that's pretty. But the the point being is that you're a generous man. You're always thinking about you know how how can I improve how the can situation. I help? So one of the things you said to me about a year ago um, is you say, hey KP, I, I see people having some real issues with their their credit and they were coming in your tax practice. Right. So you said, well, let's figure out a way to help them. And so you basically went through and found some opportunities and developers. Um, and you surrounded yourself from other, with other smart people. Yes. Which is, I think key. That's wisdom. Um, and you developed and put together a credit repair program. Yes. Um, and, but that credit repair, that's not like, Hey, come see Rob, and we're going to make your your credit go from three hundred to eight fifty tomorrow. Right, it, it doesn't it, happen that fast. It, right, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a, you know, you didn't get in that situation overnight. Yeah, you know, so it takes some time to, um, for me to help you. And in this program we have, it's a, a, a multi sided process. Yeah, and so, you know, when when you come in, we. Uh, sit down with you and pull your um, credit report, and we pull all three uh, credit reports from all three bureaus, Equifax, uh, TransUnion, and Experian. And uh, we look and see what uh, things are on there. Oftentimes there's negative things, there's things. They say there's 65% of the people have some information on the credit report that's not theirs. Wow. <laughs> It's so completely inaccurate. This it completely to inaccurate. Else. And so we sit down with you and go through that with you, and we come up with a plan at the end. Yeah. And so in that plan, if you choose to get into the program, we can dispute the things that are negative or that are inaccurate. Mm. Well, we also have another side where we help you build some positive credit. So... You know, but there's some things that involve in credit repair. Some people think that, well, if I close certain accounts, I don't have those anymore. But that's uh, that's not a good thing to do. It messes up your debt to income ratio. Yeah. So right? okay. there's several factors that go into how they uh, build that score. Okay. One of those is how long you've had credit. The you know different companies, mortgage, car mm-hmm. dealers. Insurance, they all want to know uh, how long have you shown that you can manage money? Yeah. And so, one of those things, so don't close an account, get it caught up and keep it current. You know, one of the key things is uh, making a payment on time every time. You know, I alluded earlier, many people look at it and say, well, as long as I pay this month, because I'm going on this cruise, I'm going on this trip, I'm going. I work real hard, and um, I'm I'm going to enjoy some of this money. Yeah. But you got to look at this. You created some obligations. When you created that obligation, you said to the people sitting across the table, I want to buy this car. Yeah. And you agreed that I'm going to make a payment every month. Mm-hmm. You didn't agree that I'm only going to make a payment some months because some months <laughs> I'm going to a party. Yeah. Or some months I'm going, you know, lose yeah. my mind. And so, you know, uh, in, change, in terms of changing your mental model or attitude around it, if you create that debt 
and you had the money. It's one thing if you lose your job. That I mean, yeah. you know, that's a whole different right. thing. But got to change behavior. You got to change your behavior and yeah. your habits. And yeah. so, um, it's a legal moral obligation. You know, if you're in a relationship, you want your mate to commit to you, and you commit to them. Well, if you break those commitments, you start to look at it as maybe this is not the yeah. relationship score, for score me. Score goes down. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so when you got those bad habits, yeah, you start getting these little dings, and your score starts to drop. And you, so you on your on your card here, Rob. Um, one of the things you talk about is you say we use the power of the law to remove common credit report errors. That could be everything from late payments, judgments, bankruptcies, collections, settlements, foreclosures, inquiries, liens, repos, charge-offs. And you're, most people that come to you are getting an improvement of 50 to 100 points or better. So I'm even better. Yeah. Um, That's you know, crazy. That, well, they have these issues, and they come to us. And so it, just like it didn't happen overnight. Yeah. It takes us a period of time, but we use the laws that are on the books um, to help improve yeah. their um, credit. Um, while we're doing this, I'll, I'll give you a shout yeah. out and let folks know how to get hold of you. Um, Ian, if you can put up on the screen for them, uh, HamptonRoadsCreditRepair.com. Um, HamptonRoadsCreditRepair.com. And if they want to reach out to you, Rob, they could reach you at 757-544-9779. Yes. Uh, and you do a free consultation to see if you're a good fit. Yes. So Everybody's not a good fit. Right. Okay. Or some people, um, they come to us and we do that analysis, and they're not ready. Yeah. Um, and so, but sometimes it's just not a good fit. I mean, so uh, it's not for everybody. So you do that on the tax side too, right? You'll give an assessment to figure out whether you're a good fit to help them with Absolutely. tax preparation. Same same scenario. Yeah. Um, you know, people call me some, from time to time and they say, you know, what's your fee for me to come and talk to you? Well, there's no yeah. fee to come and talk to me because I don't know what I need to do to help you. So right. let's talk and I'll charge you if there's some service that I provide for you. Right. But I welcome you to come and talk. That yeah. way I know what it is I can do to help you. Yeah, we do the same thing in my financial firm, as you're well aware, that in, in order to establish whether or not you're a good fit, that, that shouldn't cost anything. Correct. So let's figure out how we can help each other move from where we are to where we want to be. Exactly. And, and do that without it being a, um, uh, a worry in someone's mind that, um, man, what's it going to cost me to go have a conversation with Rob? You're telling folks today, hey, you can have a conversation with me in two areas of expertise. Correct. Tax preparation, credit repair issues. Yes. And don't disqualify yourself, I, I would say, is the, the number one thing here. I've seen folks do this before, and even in my own business, well, they'll disqualify themselves going, well, I don't, I don't fit to have a conversation. Yes. You know, I'm, I, you know I, either I'm too good or I'm not worthy. Right. You know, and that's the first problem with most people in life is that when they take this behavior of going, oh, that's not for me, um, and when you disqualify yourself from something that you have no enlightenment or education on, correct, that's a problem. Um, so, when when someone comes to you, uh, especially in a in a credit issue. Can you give me some examples, some folks that you've helped thus far where, where things have changed for the better for them? Um, any examples you can share with us today? Okay, so, um, uh, you know, in, in many cases, as once we look at the credit uh, report, there are uh, items on there that say were paid off, but they still show is that they're delinquent. Um, wow. You know, because, you know, just imagine if, if if somebody owes you money and you they've paid you. Yeah. You're probably not interested in going back and fixing what's at the credit bureau. You're just glad you got the money. Right. So we look at that and find out from them, oh, no, I paid that off, you know, a year and a half ago. But see, it's still showing as being delinquent on your credit report. Yeah. So... 
we go in and, and have that those kind of items removed. Wow. Well, and when you remove one item like that, what what is a average bump up in your score when that's not on there any longer? Um, it could be it's it's everybody's situation is different, but it could go. Uh, I've seen it change a couple points. I've seen it change as much as thirty points. Wow. Just from having one item. Just removed. from having one item removed. And many people, um, I mean, we've seen credit reports that are six, seven, eight pages. And so they've had a long list of um, different creditors that, you know, they're dealing with. And they'll pay one off, get another one. Yeah. And so, um, but, you know, oftentimes it's something as simple as having your address wrong. Or having and that will affect your score. Yes. Holy uh, cow! Um, you know, even things as simple as, uh, you know, uh, different. The all three credit bureaus operate independently. Okay. So one may show that you had a credit limit on a credit card of ten thousand. Another one might show that your credit limit was five thousand. Now it was the same credit card, hmm. but. Is it data entry that, you know, was put in wrong? You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What we know is if it's incorrect, it needs to be corrected. Wow. And so um, we've seen some scores go up as, you know, uh, in the first month. And you stay in the program as long as you need to. Um, there's no set amount of time. It's, you know, what is the goal in terms of credit score that you're trying to get to? Okay. So... You know, the average time that people stay in there is somewhere between four and eight months. Okay. But, again, it depends on how tough or yeah. your situation is. Right. How often should consumers be looking at their, their credit report? Is it once a month? Is no. It every well, quarter? at least once a year. Okay. Um, and we recommend that people get a credit monitoring program. So you and, have a, a robot looking yes, at it Yes, and you. in the credit monitoring it when your credit score changes, you'll it, and you can tie it to your cell phone or, yeah. but you'll get a, a a message that something has changed, yeah. and so um, with that credit monitoring, <clears throat> that allows you to check it as often as you would like to check it. Okay. Um, but you need to have the credit monitoring, so that every month and we what, can check what it. Should a person pay for monitoring service. I mean, I've seen them all over the place. Right. Um, a, a really good monitoring service is going to cost them what? That's probably uh, 20, 15 to $20 a month. Okay. And But generally, in the, the better ones, you have a um, um, identity theft, like the one we use. There's a million-dollar identity theft protection that's a part of that credit monitoring program. So basically what you're saying is there's like a identity theft insurance that they're Correct. paying for that's part so of that, their membership. So that it's allowing us to monitor your credit to see, because if it goes up or down, whichever, depend on what, if you go yeah. try to get some more credit or something when we tell you not to. Yeah. But um, in addition to us being able to monitor it and show you how it's increasing, yeah. it's also got a million dollar theft protection built into it. Wow. Okay. So, um, and, you know, and, so and identity theft is oh, that's, the number one leading crime. Yes. When you look at it from a global point of view. Yes. It's a big, big problem. It's a big in, problem. In and we also world. educate people like relative to scams that happen around your credit. Yeah. So, we're getting some negative things removed. We're showing you how to build positive credit. And we're educating you of some things that you should and shouldn't do or um, helping you to change some of your habits, your bad habits that you had yeah. that got you into that problem. Yeah. And, and habits, you know, those are things that um, you, you have to exercise the mind and yes. get your mind right before your, your wallet is going yes. to follow. <laughs> um, w one of the books that I, I always tell folks uh, that was an important book for me in terms of success principles is uh, Jack Canfield's book here that I always keep out on my table just as a reminder to myself. This was a great book written by Jack Canfield called The Success Principles. And he gets into that, that 
um, the big part of things getting better in life for you starts in the gray matter. Yes. It starts within the mind. When you look at Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich. Yes. You know, the, the multimillionaires in the 1930s that he interviewed, um, Napoleon Hill found that it's really the mindset that yeah. drives everything. Um, and I used to have this, this saying that we learned in the Marine Corps, if, if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the mind um, is an amazing thing uh, and a terrible thing the way. So I yes. think one of the old yes. commercials used to be. Um, so, you know, you've got to change some behavior yes, and absolutely. look at those be and be willing to self-critique. Yes. To go, are these behaviors that I'm exhibiting creating the environment that I'm experiencing? And, and in, in addition to the mindset, it requires a commitment on your part. Yeah. You know, so, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes people come in and they're, they're yeah. not ready for the program. Everybody wants to hit an easy button yeah. and for their problems to go away and, and for it, issues to resolve quickly. It requires some commitment on your part. Yeah. Um, so if you want to change, we can help you come up with a, a strategy or a yeah. roadmap to make the change, but it's going to require some commitment yeah. and change in behavior on your part. I used to have three words, that I, and I put it on a notebook, and you've probably seen it around here in my firm before, but having the mindset to make a decision, decide, um, then after you've decided on something you want to do, like if you want to solve some of your credit repair issues today, that decision starts with making next a commitment. Yes. So you got to move to the commitment level. Right. We all get up, you know, like I go to bed each night deciding I'm going to get up in the morning yes. and I'm going to do my workout. I, I'm going to, you know, take care of my body physically. And then the alarm clock goes off, and I'm like, man, it feels good to lay well, here. And you reach over and hit the... <laughs> yeah, hit the snooze button and miss the workout. It means I didn't do the second most important thing. Yeah. I, I formed it right in my yes, mind. you did step one. I didn't let that mind over matter, mm -hmm. right? I didn't commit. If you're not willing to put the feet on the floor and make the commitment, it's going to be hard to have execution. Yes. So decide, commit, execute. Okay. And if you want to get to the execution part, you got to look back and say, okay, where in this process can I make better decisions? And sometimes we have to trick our minds. We have to trick ourselves into doing things. And it's, um, I think it's important, Rob, for folks to know that, you know, if we have all of these great intentions and all of these things that we want to do to make ourselves better in 2021, mm -hmm. pick one. Yeah. Don't, don't try to get 10 yeah. solved. Pick one. And so like in your credit issues you can only deal with one of those issues at a time with a with your credit uh, agencies so here's something we want to dispute we're going to dispute this one thing right and then after we've handled that one we're going to come back and dispute the next thing and the next thing and each time what should happen is their credit their credit score improve, is going to increase which gives them a better opportunity for jobs yes uh, for income potential for good leverage where if I good leverage would be if I get a better credit score, I get a better rate on my home mortgage. Yes. Um, if I've got a better credit score, I get a better rating on my insurances. I know in the life insurance business, if you've got a poor credit score, that actually shows statistically that you have a lower mortality. Hmm. Mortality is tied to credit. Okay. For the people that, so people with poor credit, I mean, let's just look societally. If if a person doesn't have assets, they don't have income, they don't have cash flow, it affects their mortality. It, it affects a person's life. It affects their mental capacity. So it's important to make sure that we keep our credit scores in shape and as high as possible because it affects the rating we get on our car insurance, on our homeowners. Well, on it affects life. so many things. Now, even when you go and apply for a job, they pull your credit report. Yeah. Um, if you're getting, as you mentioned, a, a, a credit card or buying a house, um, even if you're renting an apartment now, yeah, you know, in the past they said, well, you, can you afford the payment? Come on in. Yeah. Now they want to know, because people want to know Let's how verify. do you manage. Right. What has been your history of how you manage? So, and in our community, we have a, a large number of civil servants and uh, 
DOD employees. Yes. You can lose your security clearance. Yes. If, if your credit's not in order. Yes, because they consider you a threat. Right. Yeah. You, know, you could be easily swayed or manipulated or bought. Yes. Um, and, and so it's important to make sure that you keep those things and keep that house in order. Um, look, we, we try to keep our shows to, to about an hour. Okay. And it happens fast. <laughs> We've yes. gone through this quick today. I'd love to get you back on the show in the future, and we'll talk more on the tax front. Okay. But if folks want to be able to reach you for credit repair, um, again, they can go to HamptonRoadsCreditRepair.com. Yes. And we can um, do it um, uh, on, via the telephone okay. or in person, so you don't have to. So we so have telephone, Zoom, do you do Zoom or any type yes, of video conference? Yes, we could do Zoom. So we have clients that are not just here in Hampton Roads. So even if you're in North Carolina or... Could Whatever. be California. If they yeah. find you on the website. Yes, if they find us on the website, we can um, yeah. help you get your credit straightened out. That's awesome. And while you're on the phone with them, it may be twist the hat a little bit and put a different <laughs> hat on and say, how's the taxes? How's right? your taxes? What are you doing? They, they all work they, together. They co-mingle. That's right. Yeah. Rob, thanks so much for being with us and sharing your story. Beautiful story, man. I had no idea you were one of 11. Yep. That is that is cool, and you survived that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man. So let's let's have you back in the future. We'll get an update. We'll we'll talk more on uh, on taxes the next time around. Okay. Um, and we'll have a little chance for uh, President Biden to be in office, and we'll we'll figure out what's going on with his his new tax plan. Sounds good. And uh, we'll we'll talk about it more in depth. But hey, thanks for coming and sharing with us, uh, Rob. Cheers to you. I drank all my Johnny here, but. Okay. You're an awesome dude. I appreciate you, man. Have a good day. Thank you.